What is going on, everybody? Hello. Depraved Slasher. We are back with the Pound and Slash Marvel Media Podcast. I am Pound. I am Slash. We make <laughs> sounds so, so wrong. wrong. <laughs> um, Does it? I'm here for it. Yeah, now, see? if you guys didn't notice earlier this week, we dropped our review of Spider-Man No Way Home. Along with our... Well, we also dropped Hawkeye. Hawkeye episode 5. Season 1, episode 5. Ronin's review. The last one. And here we are with the comic podcast. This is Thursday. Yep. This is what, episode 18? Episode 18. 18. We've been doing this for 18 months. Yeah, man. 18 Cutting weeks, that shit. months. <laughs> if it was 18 months, we'd be a lot further along. Oh, shit. <laughs> we might actually have other comics. We might be like Old for I real. Daredevil's coming up soon. Right, right, right. right. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. That's right. Um... But yeah, so we're super excited to get into this. This is going to be a, a bit tame of a week in terms of overall stories that are being told because I don't, I don't know what was wrong during this time of... Um, Somebody was snoring coke. Marvel. That day. Somebody, like, like these comics, I mean, I, I enjoyed them, but overall they were bad. It's just a bit slow. It's just a bit and slow. that's fine. Like, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, character building. Right. <laughs> we'll blame it on that. All right. With that being said, let's bring up the... Aid that I take so long to make every week for all three of you. Um, this is again week eighteen, as you can see. Let me make sure that it's actually up on screen. I would a for okay, it is there. No, <laughs> imagine um, not being there. <laughs> as you can see, last week was my week to pick the MVP, and right. it was Prince Namor. I almost didn't know where the hell Namor was. Who's, I was looking at week fourteen. Who's Ralph gonna pick? Who knows? Who knows, man? I do. But you don't. So, before we get started, as always, this week, we have our Marvel Trivia Question of the Week! Adrian Toomes is better known as what foe of Spider-Man? Oh, that's not... (laughs) Is it A, the Rhino, B, the Vulture, or C, Hydro-Man? Find out at the end. Or fast forward. Or, yeah, was it? or fast forward. Or just no, because it's an easy question. It's the easiest question we've run. <laughs> Watch me. Watch me. All right. Wrong. So starting off, we've got Tales of Suspense number 45. This is called The Icy Fingers of Jack Frost. Mm-hmm. This was published 7, September 1st, 1963, written by Stanley and R. Burns, penciled and inked by Don Heck. Um, this was the cover, as you can see, down below us. Um, Jack Frost looks kind of like Ice, what Iceman eventually turns into <laughs> at some point, which is uh, kind of cool. All puns intended. Right. Um, these are the characters you're going to run across. You've got Professor Shapanka, Hell who no. becomes Jack Frost. Hell no, bro. We <laughs> get the introductions of both Harry, quote unquote, Happy Hogan, mm-hmm, and Pepper mm-hmm. Potts, and we get Iron, Iron Man, Man, who's also known as Tony Stark. All right, so we begin with Iron Man rollerblading through Indianapolis on his way to the Indy I, 500. Bro, I was so caught off guard. Bro, bro, I was stoked bro. because we live in Indianapolis. Yes, show. we do, and it's that cold, that cold shit. South Indianapolis, born and raised. <laughs> right, right. Play in the snow we spend most of our days. <laughs> Sounds about right. Don't, don't it? Um, so yeah, he was, raised, he, was, he was rollerblading through Indianapolis on his way to the Indy 500 to be in a race. Right. He stops and becomes Anthony Stark and then starts the race. However, he didn't charge his chest plate and he wrecks because he's running low on energy. Harry Hogan, yes, this is the happy we all know and love. Right, the happy we know. Um, pulls him out, carries him to his car, and takes him to a hotel. Where they then get it on. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Snuggle struggle. <laughs> later, <laughs> <That's what it's laughs> later, Anthony, after recharging, Anthony meets up with Happy and tries to give him money. Happy declines, says he just wants a job, so Anthony gives him one as his chauffeur. Later, as Anthony gives Happy a tour of his office, Tony introduces Happy to Pepper Potts, and Happy falls in love immediately. And they get it on. No, I'm but, just kidding. <laughs> right, alas, they get it on. she's already in love with Tony Stark, who no, doesn't even know that, who she is. That's a lie. It was a magic spell. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I love, by the way, that she told Happy Hogan that he looks like Bella Lugosi. <laughs> what is that? He's an old horror actor who used to play um, Dracula. Oh, long, long time ago. That, that, that's his name. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so, Anthony checks his suit to make sure everything is fully functional. When his alarm goes off, he goes through his underground maze to get to his vault and finds Professor Shapanka trying to break in. He stops him by locking him in the safe until the cops get there. That name, bro. He goes back to his room, turns back into Anthony Stark. 
He then returns later as Anthony Stark decides uh, and decides to let him go, but fires him in the process. Tony says something about having cold feet, and the professor gets an idea and leaves. Goes back to his lab. He then per perfects being able to stay frozen while still moving around, which could possibly keep him alive forever, as well as keeping him being a menace. Shapanka. A week later, he begins his several-day crime spree where he robs banks. He is then dubbed Jack Frost in the newspaper and decides he's going to take the name, even though he thinks it's a corny name. What? Never mind. Right. Later, Frost invades Stark's office. Happy walks in just as Tony gets his helmet on, but then is frozen from behind. Tony tries <laughs> to use a trap door, but it doesn't really work on Jack Frost. As Frost gets out, though, Iron Man freezes him in place with a heat ray from his chest. Which is the first time we've seen him use yep. his chest plate as a he's, weapon. He's a chest plate. Even though it's still not quite the blast we all know. It's not that... Psh, psh. <laughs> um, he still, you know, uses it. Um, he freezes him in place with the ray from his chest. He then makes a tiny mega oven with spare parts in his belt because Batman. And then <laughs> Iron Man gets everyone out of the office as the police apprehend Frost. Happy then decides he's where he needs to be. That's what you should have put. Batman. Star. Like we, There's also a small cameo. Batman. Somehow DC character... Made his way into this issue. I don't know how it happened. So I gave this story a three out of five. Gave it a two. For reasons. The reasons being. Honestly, it would have been a two. But the introduction of Happy and Pepper saved it. Was really cool. Um, it's nice to finally see some people we know from the MCU in the comics. I mean, we knew they were in the comics to begin with. Right, you know, but it's finally nice to see them actually show up. Right. Um... Jack Frost is not a terrible villain. He's, he's okay. He's different compared to a lot of the other villains we've already seen. He's not an alien. He's not a robot. Right. He's not he's, somebody I'm going to hypnotize you. He's, he's not hypnotizing people. He's just freezing people. And again, I'm a big fan of Mr. Freeze as a Batman villain. Not Arnold. Actual Mr. Freeze. Free. What do you say? Freeze. Freeze for a while. Like, hey, hey, yeah, this man quotes. Hey, let's go. Why don't you chill? chill. Why don't you chill? That's what he said. He said, chill for a while. Like, uh-uh, bro. You can't be... Right. Um, but yeah, so I gave it a three. I definitely understand the two. I, I would not complain with that rank right. either. Honestly, for most I wouldn't even complain with the one rank. Um, but having the two new characters introduced was enough for me, and Whoa. the villain at least being a unique villain as opposed to again robots or aliens. Let me tell you, if those or two robot were, aliens. If if Happy and Pepper were not in it, it would have been a one. Yeah. And it just, um, it gets worse. I mean, not worse. But it, 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 it's been a, it was a slow week. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, we've got Tales to Astonish number forty seven. This was called Music to Scream by. A fantastic title. Yeah, but this... um, published September first, nineteen sixty three. Written by Stan Lee and H. E. Huntley. Penciled and inked by Don Heck. Um, that's a fun little cover. No, yeah, but it's just not what it was offered. But and yeah. these are the characters: Ant Man and Wasp. Who are also, again, um, Henry Pym and Janet Van Dyne. And then Trago. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The great Trago. Who none of us know who the fuck he is. Let's I didn't continue. know who uh, Dr. Shepanik, whatever the fuck. Shepanka? Sure. Shepanka, Wonka. <laughs> Shepanka. <laughs> so we start with Ant-Man like and the Wasp. a state, bro. Like, right. Jamaica, Illinois. We like, start with Ant-Man and the Wasp wrapping up the nabbing of a couple of bad guys. The guy, who they help, the guy who they help ends up speaking to them of a guy in India named Gazandi, who could control animals and man with music. However, he doesn't do it to humans because if he plays the wrong notes, it would put himself in a trance. So Ant-Man and Wasp leave, and Wasp sees a sign for Trago, a, a Trago jazz concert. Um, she says they're going. Ant Man's like, "No, we're not." And she's like, "I said we're going." And he's like, "Okay." What? No. <laughs> Never mind. I guess he really wants laid that bad. Right. Um, you want to put them, bro? Dude. But he only agrees if they go home and change first. <laughs> I told so, you, he only agrees if he smashes. He said, "I will go to this motherfucking thing if I'm getting the kitty first. I'm getting right. the kitty." So later, we see the end of the concert, and backstage, Trago tries to rob the event booker. Ant-Man and Wasp give chase and stop him, and the event planner says he won't press charges because Trago is a good friend, but he has to leave the country. He has to take the first plane out, and Trago says okay. Trago gets trained later by Gazandi on how to control creatures with his trumpet, Shit. and months later, Trago is in Connecticut where he tries out his ability to control people, and it works. So he heads to New York. Later in New York, Ant-Man and Wasp are on the computers, um, trying to figure out if there's any crime going on, and Trago ends up playing over the airwaves where everyone listening in New York is hypnotized. 
As Ant Man and Wasp begin to fall, Ant Man cries for Core, which and is his that aunt. word hypnotized. That's where we know where this is going. Right. Where we're going. And Core brings an army to help them out and takes them into the ant hill. Meanwhile, Trago tells his men to rob all the banks in the area and tells a snake to go after Ant Man and Wasp because he's heard about. There. I was going to say, because reasons? I was like, yo. No, he had heard about. Yeah, know, he heard about lost. it. I was going to bro, because I'm there, bro. This fucking shit, dude. So. Oh, dear God, bro. <laughs> Ant-Man and Wasp regain consciousness. Uh, sure, sure, of the, course. The snake attacks. Just in time. And Kor steps in the way to protect Ant-Man. And Ant Man hits the snake with shrinking gas, but not in time. Cord has been killed. But could you could our could, first major Ant Man death? Actually, that's wrong. Um, Janice's dad died. Janice's dad died. But, but, Cord, but could you imagine? You know, it should have been the Wasp. Anthony. Death. Right, Anthony. No, I thought it was going to be Wasp death because <laughs> I'm looking at him like did he just say Ant Man. It's Wasp and the shield all over again. Poof! Oh my god! <laughs> right. Because <laughs> he didn't say. So you what guys have Wasp? no clue what we're talking about. You have to check out one of our reviews for um, Avengers Earth's Mind this year. Because I like, way too much fun I'm like, that. Ant-Man was like, I'm safe. What about your wife? Hey, fuck her, bro. She wanted to go to this damn thing. I didn't like, even get my... <laughs> so... <laughs> I didn't even get my dick wet, bro. Um, he doesn't stop him in time. Core dies. And that's Ant-Man, fucked up there, too. <laughs> Ant- Ant-Man and Wasp head to Trago to take out Trago. <laughs> Wasp ends up chasing off the goons while Ant-Man heads in, heads in specifically oh, to take on Trago. Trago tries to squish him, but he dodges it and jumps in Trago's trumpet where he bends a piece of metal on the inside. That sounds so bad. Trago <laughs> then plays the wrong notes and his memory of everything is erased. He's been, he's now hypnotized himself. He hypnotized, you played, hey, where's DJ Cal? You played yourself. Everyone in the city <laughs> snaps out of their trance. Of course. And then later Trago becomes just a regular jazz player, but... Henry needs some air time and needs some air and him and Janet walk out to mourn the death of Core and that's how it ends. We're sad over an ant, y'all. I gave this a two out of five. One out of five, sir. Oh, fucking um, one out of fucking five, bro. I gave it a two out of five because somebody important to someone died but that is the only reason. The rest of the story was ass. was unnecessary. It was stupid shit ass. It was he Very stole my money, but he's my best friend, though. I gotta go country. This, what type this, of bad writing? Who wrote this? This was a very Stand. scary start to these comics. I promise the last three are a lot bro, better. Bro, because I was like, bro? But these first three are rough. Rough. Bro. It, and we will get to that eventually where all of them are going to be bad. I don't know we have got to all of them were bad at one point. Yeah. Jesus Christ. All right. Next one up is Strange Tales number 113, <sighs> The Coming of the Plant Man. I just want to bang my head, sir. I want to take your laptop. This, just was, this was published October 1st, 1963, <laughs> written by Stan Lee and Joe Carter, penciled and inked by Dick, Dick Ayers. Off, Dick Ayers. <laughs> I know it ain't his fault, but Stan Lee and Joe. No, it was Joe Carter. It's his fault. They should have stayed away from him. So in this one, we get Johnny Storm, who is also the Human Torch. We get Doris Evans, who I guess is Human Torch's main fling for you right now. You know what? The sights. <coughs> and we get the gardener, also known as the plant man, who basically looks like a kick-ass reject. Oh, God. This is so... With a divinity run. The divinity run. <laughs> it's like, this is just so bad. Yeah. Everything is about to just... So, we start with the Torch meeting up with Dora Evans for a date, and she's not too happy about him being on fire all the time. <laughs> you whiny chick. Meanwhile, her dad is arguing with the gardener and fires him. Torch wants to take Doris on a flight to his car, but she insists that they take the bus to his car. The whole time, Johnny is getting a bit irritated with her lack of adventure. This is a good sign it's not going to work, Johnny. Right, Johnny. You're still going to pursue this because, you know, it's not like you don't have hot alien Panani right, you got hot at your alien disposal. Gucci said somewhere you got it. Dimensional. You twat. literally have a whole other queen that said, "Can you please?" Two. No, they had two. You got two. Damn that cat. <laughs> that cat is vicious. That cat, dude. This was a shitty, shitty so, fucking comic book, too, bro. Later, the gardener is trying to get his clippers to shoot a ray to control plants, and as he uses it, they are hit by lightning in a lightning storm. All right, Ben Franklin. Right. Here we go. <laughs> and the clippers begin to actually work. And how the hell is he, bro? He should have been. Right, and, shit. Right, and the plants listen to him. Oh my god. He has now officially become the plant man. Oh no. This, you know what's fucked up? Now almost became my MVP. 
All right. What the fuck am I watching? He's in robs Doris's father's jewelry store. I mean, that's probably the most reasonable thing I would do with him. And leaves her father's watch on the floor to set him up, which was actually a good. Right. That's probably the only good part about that whole comic. The cops question Doris's father, and Johnny swings by to see what's up. After Doris tells Johnny that her dad has been set up, (laughs) he flies off to see what's up. He is confronted by Plant Man, and Plant Man uses the dew on the plants to put his flame out, and then ties him up, and then Plant Man leaves. <laughs> Plant Man. Homie. Yo. Let's this, have a talk. This is a pace pop Pete all over okay. again. Dude. This is the conversation I want to have with you, man. You better be glad there was one more com- If bro. you tie a motherfucker up, mm-hmm. and he's a hero, kill him. <laughs> okay. Because if you ever tie people up and then just leave, and just leave. you're going to lose. You know why? Because oh you're dumb. Because you're dumb. You better be glad there was a good comic in this fucking piece of shit, dude. I was so, ready to go, bro. I was ready for it. Because you, when you asked me who my MVP was, I said him. You said, okay. I was like, yes. I have not changed, sir. He will always pick a dumb villain. Because we got dumbass people like him. Here with Torch doing dumbass shit. Like, what are you Hume doing? Torch hasn't done anything wrong yet. He got he got sprayed with water. He couldn't flame on. How the fuck is he supposed to stop a villain if he can't? Uh, hold on, bitch. Hold it up. Because he just took a whole ocean <laughs> and played the fuck on. That was a special moment. I'm so done, bro. You Anyways, the next day, Plant Man takes over Central Park and demands that the mayor surrender New York to him. Johnny confronts him again. And when Johnny is about to be beaten, he launches a super fireball into the air that actually is so hot it starts to dry out and kill the plants. Aww. The plants then get pissed and destroy the scissors from the plant man and go back to being normal so that they don't die. Plant man hides in a hollow tree to inevitably show up and bug me. I actually put to inevitably show up and annoy the shit out of me later. Right. Um, and then later, Doris thanks him for everything that he did. I also gave this a 2 out of 5. 1 out of 5. Um, <laughs> I gave it a 2 out of 5. Yeah, why'd you give it a 2 out of 5? Because <laughs> setting her dad up was actually pretty smart. That's why it would have got zero out of five if that was. Well, unfortunately, one is the lowest I can go. Right. <laughs> and I was like, bro. And dude. there are some ones out there. Oh, trust us. Oh, definitely. So we don't made so far. This could definitely be a little worse. Not much, but a little worse. You mean not, um, not, not Pace by Pete worse? Oh my god. Yeah, Pace by Pete was better than this. D- damn straight, is he? I got you on a flame wheel. Bye, bitch. Alright, this is where the comics actually start to get at least interesting. Interesting. Not better, but interesting. This is the Fantastic Four number 19, and we're back to Prisoners of Titles, and this is called Prisoners of the Pharaoh. See, we already knew what game this was going to be, so... This was published October 10th, 1963, written by Stan Lee, penciled by Jack Kirby, inked by, by Dick... Dick. Ayers. Who's getting so much better at his art? He really now, yeah, his art is getting better. Yeah, so much better. Mike slowly. So the characters we are going to run into are the Fantastic Four, represented by Mister Fantastic, also known as Reed Richards, Sue Storm, also known as the Invisible Girl, the Human Torch, also known as Johnny Storm. I did that backwards compared to everything else, and then Ben Grimm, who's known as the Thing. We're also going to have Alicia, and then we're going to have Ramatut, who I actually think may be one of the incarnations of Kang the Conqueror. Well, like you said... But that's for another story for another time. Right, 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 right. We begin with Reed, Sue, and Johnny looking for Thing. They find him and tell him and Alicia to come back to the lab. So when they do, Reed tells them that they may have found a sight-revitalizing drug back in ancient Egypt, and he wants to take Doom's old time-traveling device back to find it. Which, that was interesting. Yo. Right. See, see, we're doing and, some good writing here. And Let's everyone go. agrees, and they all head back to Doom's old castle. Once they get there, they I'm find... I'm Doom was not there, but yeah. Right. Well, he already abandoned that castle. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because he left that shit. Never mind. Once they get there, they find the machine still intact, and they teach Alicia how to use it by touching it. And she then sends them back in time. They arrive in Egypt and are immediately attacked by guards. They take out a bunch of them and oh, yeah. eventually have all of their powers sapped, and they are brought before Ramata. Which, that was... Weird. I yeah, they, like, they just lost their powers mid fight. Oh, okay. Cause I'm like, wait a minute. They, they, hey, they should just cleared everybody. Everybody should have got the work. Like, right. bro, barely inconvenienced. So Tut reveals that he knows who the Fantastic Four are of because he's do. from a further future than them. Yeah. And he traveled back in time for basically some excitement. He was bored because in the future where he's from, there's no crime, nothing. 
And that's like, that's so like Kenny, though. he traveled back in time right. for some excitement, but in the process, it ruined his eyesight and his time machine was broken. Now the Egyptians helped cure his eyesight. However, he has a gun. He he now has the gun that also sapped their powers. This is going to come back into play. I guarantee it. The gun forces the men into slave labor and Sue into being his queen. Hey. Because everybody wants a piece of Sue. Everybody wants a piece of that invisible girl. However, in the blazing hot sun, Thing turns back into Ben Grimm, because apparently that's how it works, Right. and what? jumps off the boat and swims to shore. He sneaks around and gets Tut's gun and blasts Sue as he's turning back into the Thing. Right. Um, and back under Tut's control as the Thing. Uh, Sue then grabs the gun and shoots Johnny to free him. And then he forces Tut to flee with his fireballs. And then they shoot Thing and Reed and then take out some guards in the process. Right. They find out that Tut has run back to his Sphinx, which is actually his spaceship. Right. Um, and they follow an underground path to it. After avoiding a trap, they get in and Tut reveals that it is a trap and fills the room with water. However, Torch starts to evaporate it. Thing! Thing! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just... Everybody keep going. Um, Torch evaporates, evaporates it. it. <laughs> and they end up at the top and find a dome where Tut is. And right. he has managed at some point to get the time machine fixed. Tut time travels out. He says, fuck this shit, I'm out. Right, bye. And the Fantastic Four find the eye healing potion and then dip out just as the mechanics inside start to explode. They make it back to the time traveling pad just in time. But as they arrive, they realize that radioactive substances don't travel back with them. Right. Ben is super sad, but thankfully happy, but thankful that they all risk their lives to try and help Alicia. She's okay with everything. I actually gave this a four. I gave it a three. I don't know why it says five. I don't think I changed it from the last one. I gave it a three. It, this, this was a step in the three comics that we read. And I like that the Sphinx was actually a spaceship. That was interesting. Right. Now, and here's the thing. This is either Kang from the future right. or somebody during Kang's time as ruler. Right. Would be my guess. Like you say, I don't think we're going to get Kang anytime soon. Right. But I think it's the preliminary building up to that. At least that would be my guess. Right. You heard Kang say he had multiple people. That look like him. Now for the next comic, which is Journey into Mystery number 97. We actually got two stories in this one. Here we go. Story A is Probably called good The one. Lava Man. Right. And story B is called Home of the Mighty Norse Gods, which is apparently a new thing they're going to start doing in Journey into Mystery. And so now I'm kind of curious as to what's going on. Don't going. let that title fool you. This this was a decent one, actually, out of all of them. So, yeah, don't let that fool you. Um, This was... Published October 1st, 1963. Written by Stan Lee. Penciled by Jack Kirby. Inked by Don Heck. Yes, sir. Um, some characters we're going to see in the A story are Thor, Odin, Loki, a very well drawn Jane Foster. Right, damn. The Lava Man, and Dr. Basil Andrews. And Andrews. I thought what I was that was saying, last Wait, what? <laughs> All right. So, we start with Thor saving a pilot in midair and Bro. pushing the falling plane into the sea so that it doesn't crash into people. He returns to his office as Donald Blake and has decided to finally tell Jane that he loves her. He remembers that he can't without Odin's permission, and she knows what he wants to tell her, but she gets mad that he won't, so she just leaves. Right. Pissed off. That night, Thor calls upon Odin and tells Odin that he wants to marry an Earth woman, and Odin forbids it and dips. Doesn't even give him a reason right, or nothing. Reason. Well, he gives him a reason. Well, remember, well, he, said, reason, he said in the last issue why he can't do it. The, the, the reason is no son of mine, right. a god, will marry a mortal woman. A mortal woman. I thought, I thought, he, said, I thought he said that a couple Odin. times. Yeah, yeah he, said, he said it to him like why he couldn't do it. Um, but, he does, but he dips without letting <clears throat> Thor respond. Right. He's like, no, you're not marrying an earth woman. And then, zoop, see ya. Right. And he dips out, which is kind of fucked up. So he's heartbroken, and oh, yeah. Loki sees this as an opportunity to raise Lava Man out of a volcano to attack humanity. Don, Blake, decides to give up being Thor for Jane. But as he goes to talk to Jane, she tells him she's quitting and going to be a nurse in Dr. Basil Andrews' office, you bitch. 
<laughs> right. And then this was a... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was kind of a shady thing. She quits. Right, she quits. Literally, right, right there. She feels she can't work for or be with someone who is afraid to speak their mind. Donald Damn. says goodbye and decides to take a walk. You bitch. Right. That's for you too, Donald. Yeah, no, they both bitches, but she's a bigger bitch, though. While walking, the city is attacked by Lava Man. The city evacuates because, you know, no other superheroes were around. Um, right, we, what? This is an Avenger-level crisis, what the hell? And the army is defeated, and Thor steps in. Thor pretty much whoops his ass. ass. Yeah, he, I mean, and that's what you should he's do. He's right. already pissed. Right. He just beats the hell out of this dude. Gave him no remorse. Um, there was like one moment where he was like trapped in some ash, and he just broke Bro, out of it. And broke was like, out nah. of it like a like a no. G, like no. Um, so Thor pretty much whoops his ass because he's already angry. He traps the lava monster back in the volcano, and then tells Loki, "Look, you can't do this shit to me. Right? Like, it's not gonna work. Send me the worst. Right? You bitch. Right? <laughs> he calls. That's what he should say. Loki, you's a bitch. You know I'm pissed. Donald Blake returns to his office to find Jane and Dr. Andrews there. Jane came to say goodbye. Donald pleads for her to stay, but she says, you know what? You didn't even care enough to come find me when the lava monster attacked, and Dr. Andrews here actually took me to safety. I would have shocked both of them. Roll credits. They leave, and Donald wonders why he is the mightiest hero, and yet he can't even win the one prize he wants the most. Because you're a bitch. <laughs> Don. Don, you could you could have been got this girl. You need to step up and tell dad to fuck off. Right. Because he, obviously, you're not good enough to be in Asgard any fucking way. Right. Why are you not in Asgard? <laughs> right. That's what I'm going to be like. Yo, why I still are you not gave, in Asgard? I still gave the issue a four out of five. Yeah, it four out of five. good story. Right, right. This this was stepping from like There are just some things that you know, love-wise are irritating me that I right. want to smack people for. Because mm-hmm. now. She's gone. She's gone. And we're going to deal with this shit. Right. 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 She's... This is... We've got to deal with a... Well, he's... On the plus side, he's a pissed off Thor. So, he, so every single time we do during Mystery, he's going to whoop that ass. That's Hopefully. what I'm expecting. Hopefully. Hopefully. That's what I expect from each issue of during Mystery. A whoop ass. That's it. Hopefully. So. Story B is going to show Surtur, Ymir, right. Odin, and Beery. Beery is the one person out of all these people I didn't know, but I know who he is now. Right. All right, so this is just actually a very quick story, um, and it's basically on the start of the gods of Asgard. The good gods were called the Aesir, and they fought frost giants. At the world's end sat Surtur, waiting to destroy the earth. Right, because Surtur was just that... Or Asgard, that, technically. Right, well, yeah. Um, eventually, Ymir, the greatest of all frost giants, was born from the Well of Life. A magic cow was also born soon after from the same well, and kept Ymir fed for ages. One day, the cow had been had seen a being being born from the ice within that same well, and this ended up taking human shape, and the character's name was Beery, who would then give way for the gods for to be born. Beery got married and had a son named Bor, and Bor eventually got married and had three sons, one of which was Odin, who would go on to become Odin. Bro, actually, I, I like this story. It, is, it was interesting, because they all had chain. I was like, and when it said Odin, I said, Odin? Yep. Hey, that's cool. Odin would then go on to slay the last of the ice giants. Right, because yeah. And then him and his brothers planted the tree of Yggdrasil Ygr- oh, on Earth. Hell no. And awaited for the coming of man. I actually gave the story a 3 out of 5. It was not really like... It, they didn't really tell an actual story story. It was just kind of giving you some detail on some of the yeah, guards. Yeah, I give it a 3 out of 5. Although, yeah, it was cool. they did say that in future stories, it would actually be focused on one event that happened back in the gods. So we'll actually... I'm hoping this does get better. Right. I like Solter. Uh, so, how do you say, Sir? Surter? Bro, he looked like what he did in Ragnarok, bro. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. I mean, he's a little more, I guess, chunky. And the other one's more like, you know, tall and bulky. But it, it look, they got the horns and shit. got the face right. What he looked like. I was right. like, hey, that's Surter from, from Ragnarok. All right. And the last comic we get to talk about today is Tales of Suspense number 46. This is Iron Man Faces the Crimson Dynamo. Published October 1st, 1963. Written by Stan Lee. Penciled by Jack Kirby. Inked by G. Bell. Right, this is somebody completely new. Wow. I think he had a comic either last week or the week before. Huh. As a matter of fact, I think it was the, not the last Tales of Suspense. I think it was the one before. Um, I, it, it looks like all the others, to be honest. Can't yeah, really they all look much of a difference. Right. Anyway, so the characters we're going to meet in this are Mr. Big, Vonko, backslash Crimson Dynamo, right. Iron Man, and Happy Hogan and Pepper Potts. Um, we start with Mr. Big going to see Professor Vonko, who he fears. Uh, 
Mr. Big is the leader of the Russians at this time. I don't know if he's a real person. I think he is. I, I think I, he's based on a real person. Right. I'm, I'm going um, like, to look that up. Like, Professor uh, Ivan Vanka, who many of you know as the guy in Whiplash Iron Man 2, 2, who plays Whiplash. Man, he's a, he, Whiplash. So here he's the Nitro. Uh, her, but, her, but here he becomes the Crimson Dynamo. Crimson Dynamo, right. Um, so anyways, Vanko takes Mr. Big to a place in a lab where he dons the Crimson Dynamo suit and shows Mr. Big all the different ways he could defeat Iron Man for the Russians. However, in the process, he scares the shit out of Mr. Big. Mr. Big sends him out to put an end to Stark as well as Iron Man, but also secretly plans to kill Vanko once Vanko finishes the job. Right. Later, Stark plans to send a rocket into space. After some heckling between Happy and Pepper, he tells them to proceed with the launch and then goes and becomes Iron Man just in case shit goes south. And it does. Oh, yeah, that's not foreshadowing um, nothing. Crimson Dynamo f- fries the circuits of the shuttle, and Iron Man saves the shuttle as well as the people inside, which he did it in a really cool way. Yeah. As it was falling, he flew up and caught it flew and then and caught landed. It. Right, it landed it. And then safely put it down. Yeah, I said, that is... Uh, it just had some minor back problems for a little bit. Right, right, right. But how he did that was uh, very interesting. Like, okay. Right. See? See, he cares somewhat. Somewhat. <laughs> Dynamo then continues to ruin all of Stark's attempts oh, yeah. to shoot other rockets into space, as well as destroying all of Stark's locations. The government starts to prepare to pull all of Stark's funding and contracts, and even suspects that he might be a communist himself, purposefully sabotaging his labs right. after gaining contracts to put the Americans behind. Pepper and Happy vow to stick by his side until the very end. Right. Aww. Right. Aww. Dynamo then decides to target the main Stark location. In the process, Iron Man finds him and realizes it's been him setting Stark up. Crimson Dynamo's powers don't work on Iron Man, and Iron Man traps him inside a circle of trees. He gets Dynamo to admit it's been him doing everything, and he happens to record it on a miniature tape player, also inside his belt. Thank you, Batman. (laughs) Um, Told you, Batman makes two guest stars appearance. Yep, there he is. So, Iron Man then disappears and records a secret message pretending to be Mr. Big. He plays it for Dynamo, and it appears Mr. Big plans to kill Vanko as soon as he returns. Funny right. thing, though, is Mr. Big was actually planning to kill him. Was planning to kill him. So this was all both a lie and, and very truth. true. It's a lie that happened to be true. Right. Which is always interesting. Iron Man convinces Vanko to defect and join America, and even more, be one of the head scientists for Stark. Vanko agrees. Iron Man takes Vanko back to introduce him to the crew. Meanwhile, Mr. Big is shitty about Vanko being a traitor and vows to get Iron Man next time. And that's how it ended. I gave this a four as well. I yeah. like the Crimson Dynamo character. I like the fight. I gave it a three, two. but I like I like it. Um, it's obviously not the best Iron Man story we'll ever get. It's not the worst. We have had far worse already. Um, but again, this kind of caps off a somewhat boring week. Like, yes... A couple of these we gave. I gave threes and fours. He gave a couple of them a th- like. He gave a couple of threes and a four. Right, three and a four. And, and the rest is still, like one overall, two. it's just been kind of really, I, really I, overall, it's like a two. To be honest, for the whole yeah, week. this week felt like a two or a th- maybe maybe two and a half to three. Right. Um, it it's really yeah, slow. they were they were bad. Like they were they were. I'm not saying they're. I should say bad. I mean, well, yeah. Um, because I like I like the tell suspense one. They like when that it's like you said the truth, the light that became a truth, like. That, I like that little play on right there. That's why I give it like from a two to a three. Right. But overall, it's just I take I'll get you next time. Like fuck, we're doing that again. Are we? Uh, that's a two on site, bro. Team Rockets plastic. No, again. Snarf, snarf. That is um, Thundercast. That is not me out. <laughs> that wasn't oh. even Thundercast, dude. Snarf is a fucking Animaniacs reference. No, Snarf is, is Snarf. Th- well, that too, but Snarf is from Thundercats. Uh, I don't watch Thundercats. Motherfucker. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, because I am a little bit tired. Me too. Um, it, I'm it, not tired enough to go to bed, but looking at these computer screens. can do that. You can. Has gotten me uh, a little down here. Um, oh. With that being said, Ralph got to pick MVP this week. Guess who it is? Guess. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Crimson Dynamo. Dynamo. And no, I was going to say it's the grass. I was going to go, no, let's be real who it would have been. It would have been the plant. Don't do that. Don't do that. It, Ralph. One-off fucking villain. Yep. Ralph did the correct thing this week. <laughs> I always do the correct. What you mean, bro? And no, he I'm chose like, the hero that lost his shit and just beat the fuck out right. of everybody. Right. Well, let me tell you, if this comic was not in it, it would have been the plant because these heroes are not winning. It's, it's getting annoying. It's like, damn. Then you get Thor... He, he's going off rage. I like that. That's good. Because all the rest of the time, it's like, why are you fire? Turn off your fire. 
Why, well, why and, can't you do this? And, and so here's my problem. The one comic that has been solid every week for like the last four weeks it's really been Thor. has been Fantastic Four. Or Fantastic Four. Right, yeah. And this week it wasn't a bad story. But the entire story ended up being for nothing. Boy. They went back in time to get this healing that solution. That meant nothing. And then when they came back after going through all the bullshit they went through, it didn't even come back with them. So you felt like you just read an entire comic for no fucking reason other than to read it. We don't even know if this Ramatut dude is going to reveal who he actually was, is whatever. Right, he's, he may not even come, come back, back to be honest. We may never see him again. Ever again. I can tell you, because I, I can tell, yeah, I, but I'm not, I don't care that much. Right. That's how it is with him, um, but yeah. But yes, Thor, he gave the MVP. Congrats, Thor. This is your first time. No? No, he's been it twice. This is the second time. Second time. Because I think you gave it to Thor week two. Week two. But at first, it would have been the plant because it's just, it's irritating. It really is. I swear. Hot lightning bolt, and then you don't fry, but the plant, you come alive, will you? Like Monster with Frankenstein? Right. What the hell, man? Um, And what that brings us to, ladies and gentlemen, again, the Marvel Trivia Question of the Week. Adrian Toomes is better the rhino. known as the rhino. what foe of Spider-Man? The it's rhino. the rhino. Yep. The vulture. No, the rhino. Hydro man. Fuck that shit. It's the rhino. It's always A. It's always the rhino. It is actually the vulture. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, he knew who it was. Um, the vulture is Adrian Toomes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you didn't know that, uh, you're probably not a Marvel fan. Or at least... You haven't least, seen Spider-Man? You, a Spider -Man you didn't see Spider-Man. You didn't see Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> um, now, we do have some good news that comes along with all this. Uh, I do believe, if I remember correctly, next week is supposed to be quite a bit better. Um, let me go back over here and shrink this and pull up the list so we can let you guys know what next week's comics are. Yeah. Um, next week's comics. Where the fuck is... No, I want you to let the order. That's what I want. The order. The, the order. order. We gotta go to the page. first order. Gotta go to page three. Right, that's where we at. And then we gotta scroll down a little bit. Hey, look, there were some good ones. Uh, there we go. There's a shitty one. Let me get good. Thank you. Thank you. For nothing. For nothing. <laughs> All right. We get a Tales to Astonish, which is another Ant-Man story next. It's called The Porcupine. That's going to kind of suck. Right. Um, then we get The Human Torch meets Captain America. Captain America's going to win hands down. He's my, fuck, he's not, I'm not picking a piece. And then B story <laughs> of that is The Return of the Omnipotent Baron Mordo. Oh shit! Oh, cause the last time we saw him, he was fighting Doctor Strange. Yes, he was. That was in his first issue when he first appeared. So that's two comics. The third comic is Fantastic Four number twenty, where they fight the mysterious Molecule Man. Mm. Comic number four is the X Men number two, and it's right. called No One Can Stop the Vanisher. Right. Sure. Comic number five right. is Amazing Spider Man number six, where it's face to face with the Lizard. Finally get to see Dr. Connors. And the number six also has two stories attached to it. This is Journey into Mystery. The worst one is called Challenged by the Human Cobra. Really? You did a lizard and a human cobra in the same week? <laughs> you ripped out some stuff. The same month. And then we are going to read about Odin battling Ymir, King of the Ice Giants. Well, yeah, because we, we, I guess, I mean, I guess I'm going to be okay with that. I probably would not care because, I, I mean, unless that's more of like a fast forward story. But if it's literally telling the story that we already just rehashed, like, I don't care. But that's fine. I mean, I read uh, it. What happened? Oh, the next week one? The week one ever? Bruh! Next week's is going to be dope. Not this coming up one. Not the one we have to read, but the week after. So it starts off with Iron Man fighting the Melter. Anyway, whatever. Right. Um, and then the birth of Giant Man. Finally. So Ant-Man becomes Giant Man. Giant Man. Man. He's we're also getting something, we're getting the next Avengers, it's called the Space Phantom. Avengers is just Avengers, we're always here for that. Right, come on now. The next Spider-Man, which is the return oh, of the Vulture. Vulture, he comes back. Strange Tales, where Human Torch fights Sandman. Sandman wins, because he can't beat fucking And then we nobody. get the origin of Doctor Strange, that same issue. And then, Fantastic Four fights some sort of KKK dude called the Hate Monger. <laughs> and... And, hold on, is that the same week? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's going to be the last one for that week. Damn. The week after Iron Man comes in is the red and gold Iron Man. Oh, he finally gets his red yeah. and gold suit. 
He said, put a little hot rod red on that bitch. The hot rod anyways, red. Anyways, anyways. So next week's definitely a step up. The next two weeks actually right. look really good. And I'm super stoked for this. Um, uh, next week we're going to have our special guest back. Damien is going to come over. He's going to be in on it with us for the Hawkeye and the comics. Um, and we're planning on recording something else special that I will go through and edit and put out at some point. I don't know what it's going to be yet, or when it's going to be, or that it comes out, but we won't go too far into that. Um, again, this week was a slow week. Sometimes you got to push through the slow weeks to get to weeks like next week. Right. Because... And I don't want to say let's not do it again, because the, the, this is... It's that's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. We're going to have... Bro, not every comic is going to be a fire comic. Hell no. We're going to get a... Hey, one of these days, we're going to get nothing but Stranger Tales. And that's it. Just... A whole week of Stranger Tales, and I'm like, well, this is going to be an easy one. One out of five for all of the bitches. You all suck. Get the fuck out of here. You do dick, bro. All of them do it. And the good news is, the worst comic out of all these looks like it's going to be, for next week, looks like it's going to be the, por- the very first the one. Porcupine. It's like you read the shit one, and then it's all uphill from there. Right. We're going to get to see Captain America finally make his appearance in the Marvel Universe as it is here. Right, right, um, right. And then we're going to get to see... I mean, again, Molecule Man is actually not a bad villain. I know who Molecule Man is. Yeah, he... It's pretty... Not the same, he he he's, turns he's, shit to mo- molecules, don't he? Well, right. he just moves around molecule, he, molecules. Right, okay, right, right. And okay. then, I don't know who the Vanisher is, but it's X-Men. I'm not going to complain about getting another X-Men comic. Right. I mean, it might... The villain might suck, but the X-Men are the X-Men. Right, like the X-Men. And then you got Avengers one. And then we got... No, the Avengers ain't the week after. Ah, shit, right. And then we got Spider-Man facing the lizard. Right. Dr. Really? Connors comes in. Right. Doc Connors comes in. Right. And then the Thor one. I'm actually excited about the second story in the Thor one. The first right. one might be good, but the second one is the one I'm the actually birth excited of, uh, for. Doctor Strange. No, no, no. That's uh, Odin fighting Ymir. Oh, oh, fight Ymir. Like that is going to be interesting. My arch enemy Ymir. So yeah, if this week was boring to you, stick around. Next week it'll be a lot better. We're just going in order, guys. That's that's what we're doing. We're looking at the order that they want us to go through. Um, what does that mean? Oh, that's an origin story. Cool. <coughs> Sorry, the side that we go off of, they have different emblems and stuff for things. Right. Um, but yeah, so, again, next week will be better, and we're super excited for that. Yeah. Um, with that being said, I guess that's going to end it, man. Mm-hmm. Tune in next week for some good shit. Right, because we got some bad shit. Next week, next Monday, Hawkeye season finale, <sighs> we are going to be talking about it, which means we're also going to be picking... Right. The next show that we do. Oh, right. Or, or movie. Okay, let me tell you. If there's nothing yet. new. Hey, you know what happened? We're going right to the fucking box. That's what we're going to do. If there ain't nothing coming out, guess who we pick for the next? That means the fuck Strange we'll be out. picking out of the box to see what, what's next. Uh, we'll actually probably let Damien pick out of it for shits and giggles. He hasn't got to pick out of it yet. Right, because that's how the T-Rev do it. So, yeah, we'll let Damien do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then... We have another good lineup of comics. As you guys can see, we're kind of setting up in a new way. This isn't necessarily going to be the permanent situation. Um, we're in the process of still moving things out. Um, my mom's got to finish moving some of her things out. And eventually, we're going to have this nice little setup down here. Unfortunately, there's always going to be the birds now. But, you know. They were asleep. I saw that. A little bit. A little yeah, bit. Like they had yeah, like their head turned. But all right, ladies and gents, that is going to do it. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next week. Excelsior. Excelsior. Boom.